The New York Rangers get what was arguably one of the biggest steals of the first round of the NHL draft and select right winger Gabe Perot with the number 23 overall pick. What does Perot bring to the table? And when can we expect him to make his debut for the New York Rangers? All this and much, much more on today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 860 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And as we just mentioned, yes, Gabe Perot falls all the way to number 23 to the New York Rangers in the first round. They pounce. They get their guy. Uh... For the entire rundown, Gabe Pro is basically going to be the Gabe Pro show here today. And I uh, just got to talk about, you know, everything he's done so far in his hockey career, uh, what the Rangers are probably hoping to get out of him whenever he does debut for the team, as well as, you know, just some really eye popping numbers that he's put up thus far in his career. But uh, to begin, just the basics, uh, once again, the number 23 pick in the draft, Gabe Pro goes to the Rangers, right winger, five foot 11, 165 pounds. He is Canadian American. Uh, 18 years old. He is committed to play for Boston College for the 2023-2024 season. That's going to be his freshman season there. Uh, people have been raving about his passing and his hockey IQ. Some of you even called him the most intelligent uh, player, the, the highest hockey IQ in this year's entire draft class. So that's good to, uh, to hear. And obviously, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of his attributes uh, a little bit later in today's episode. But one thing I want to mention right here off the bat is uh, the family tree, so to speak. He is the son of former NHL player Yannick Perot. Uh, Yannick played for the Leafs, Kings, Canadians, Preds, Coyotes, and Blackhawks. He was a center, made one all-star team, and Gabe's older brother Jacob was drafted number 27 by the Ducks in 2020. He's 21 years old and uh, made his NHL debut for the Ducks in 2021-2022. Thus far, though, that is his only appearance in an NHL game, although he is just 21, and obviously I'm sure they have bigger plans for him somewhere down the line here, but... It was interesting to watch this whole thing unfold because it wasn't a situation where you know the Rangers traded up or did anything fancy or anything along those lines. They basically just stood pat, held their ground, and Gabe Perot fell quite a bit farther than I think a lot of people thought that he probably would. And it's possible that you know maybe size had something to do with that. We're going to talk about his size or lack thereof in a little bit. Um, but I saw a couple of people mentioning that you know a couple of players who are bigger, you know. They have size on their on their side. They were going a little bit earlier in the draft than expected. And then some of the smaller guys maybe falling a little bit, going a little bit later. That seemed to be at least a mini trend uh, for the first round of the NHL draft. But like I said, Gabe Perot, again, many, many people thought that uh, he would be gone by the time it was the Rangers' turn to pick at number 23. For some quick context on that, you know, the whole picture there, I'm looking, I've got it up on my laptop right now here, 15 different or hockey publications. I was going to say NHL publications, but they cover all kinds of hockey. Uh, everything from elite prospects to Bob McKenzie to Dauber prospects, all the usual suspects. Uh, of these 15 publications, Bob McKenzie had Perot ranked the highest at number 10. He had him ranked the best at number 10. Uh, Smart Scouting had him ranked the lowest at number 27. And of these 15 publications, and again, th these are people, you know, scouts and people that do this for a living and people that know what to look for and uh, you know, gen nobody bats a thousand, obviously, when it comes to projecting what a prospect is going to do. But for the most part, you know, these people are very, very good at what they do. And of the 15 publications that I'm looking at here, only two had Perot ranked worse than number 23. And of course, number 23 is when the Rangers took him. And 13 of the 15 had him ranked at number 21 or better. So just, you know, surface level stuff here, but still very important, I think, to look at. Uh, again, it looked for sure like he would be gone by the time the Rangers picked and he was not. And just going by the rankings here, right off the bat, uh, it already feels like a steal for the New York Rangers. That's before you even dive into who he is as a player and what he brings to the table. You know, there's, I, I got to talk about these stats that he's put up. There's a term that I use on this podcast that, you know, I, I throw it around quite a bit and I probably overuse it if I'm being completely honest with myself and with all you guys. But uh, there's a term that I like to use called video game numbers. And a lot of you, anybody who's new around here, you probably can figure out what that means. It's anytime somebody, you know, really goes on a heater. Somebody has like five, you know, five games and like 10 or 12 points, whatever the case might be, uh, he's putting up video game numbers. Um, with Perot, 
I don't even know what to call it. Whatever the next like level up is from video game numbers, maybe video game numbers with the difficulty set to rookie or something along those lines. It's just ridiculous what he's done. Uh, Pro last season played for the United States National Development Team of the USHL, skated in 23 games, 19 goals and 26 assists. So 45 points in 23 games, basically two points per game. Uh, He was also a plus 22 in those 23 games. And those numbers are obviously tremendously impressive, averaging two points per game. Nobody does that in the NHL. Those numbers pale in comparison to the ones that I'm about to read you uh, right now. As far as, you know, what he did on the U.S. National Under-18 team, he skated in 63 games here, scored 53 goals. It gets crazier. Had 79 assists. So a league record, 132 points. 132 points in 63 games. Well over two points per game. He was also... In the, in the 63 games, he was a plus 79. So good things obviously tended to happen whenever Perot was on the ice here. But I mean, just ridiculous. I mean, you talk about just dominating a league. And I realize, you know, that's not the same thing as the NHL. I get that. Nobody can put up those kinds of numbers in the NHL. I don't care if you're doing that in the NHL, the AHL, whatever HL you want to look at. Uh, that's tremendously impressive, no matter who you are, what team you play for, and what the circumstances might be. But I also want to point out uh, some of his international stats here. Uh, He won the gold medal with the United States in the IIHF World Championship, skated in seven games there, had five goals and 13 assists. So he lit it up there. And in this tournament, the U.S. went undefeated and won all of its games by at least three goals until the gold medal game. In that game, U.S. beat Sweden uh, three to two in overtime. So Pro obviously did a phenomenal job in that tournament. He had 18 points. That was the second most of any player in that tournament. His only, uh, the only person that beat him was William Smith, his teammate who had 20 points. But yeah, I want to keep everything rolling in just a second here. Obviously, uh, that's kind of the the basics as far as who Perot is and what he's done. But I want to dive into this a little bit deeper, talk about, you know, when we can expect to see him on the Rangers and uh, what kind of a role he's going to fill for this team. Uh, talk about, you know, what the scouts are saying about him, all that good stuff coming up, that and much, much more. Uh, but first, we do have to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by Athletic Greens. I drink AG1 every morning before going to work, and it makes me feel unstoppable and like I'm ready to take on the day. It just is the absolute best supplement that I've ever had. I started taking AG1 once again because I want a supplement that tastes great, but I also wanted to see what all the hype was about. You know, obviously, uh, this is a sponsor, a wonderful sponsor for all these locked on podcasts here and the hosts talk about it. And a couple of them tried it before me. They were recommending it. They're raving about it. Uh, They couldn't say enough good things about it. So I'm glad I tried it and I've been on it ever since Uh, a little over a year. I believe we're up to about 14 months here. So uh, it's been great. AG one is a foundational nutrition supplement that delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. AG one replaces your multivitamin probiotic and more in one simple drinkable habit science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source soup nutrients. AG1 is raising the standard for quality in the supplement category. AG1 helps you build health foundation first. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL network and check it out. All right, we just want to thank everybody as always for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And for the everydayers, Definitely stick around. It's a really busy, really fun part of the offseason here. We're going to be all over uh, the second day of the NHL draft. It's actually already happened. We're going to be talking about uh, the players that the Rangers picked on day two of the draft and going to have a lot of fun doing that. We're going to talk about every single selection that the Rangers made. All these kids, you know, uh, making their dreams come true. They all deserve, you know, a moment on Locked On New York Rangers uh, at the very least. So we're going to do that. Also going to be turning our attention to free agency, see what the Rangers do there, which is uh, going to be happening on Saturday. And also, eventually, we're going to do a deep dive into the Rangers schedule, which was just released the other day. Uh, we will work our way to that as well. But for now, let's go ahead and keep the focus on Perot, 
who obviously is the Rangers' first-round pick a season after they did not have a first-round pick. So obviously, you know, big plans and big expectations for Perot uh, to eventually be a big-time player for this team. But could we just actually take a moment to appreciate the fact that the Rangers, not only did they not take a left winger, which is all they've been doing uh, in recent drafts, but they actually took a right winger. And to me, right wing is, and I've said this before, it is the biggest area of weakness on this team. And frankly, I don't even think it's that close. You know, the Rangers, a few years ago, you could maybe say that about center, but they've really kind of fortified themselves at the center position. Left wing, I mean, they're absolutely loaded. They have good defensemen. I mean, the pipeline maybe is getting a little bit thin, but they have good defensemen on the NHL roster, and they got Igor Shesterkin, so there's no need to worry about goalie. Uh, right wing, to me, has always been the spot that, uh, you know, they've been a little bit weak right now as far as right wingers with upside. What do you have? You have Capo Caco. That's about it. You know, there's other guys that can step in and play a top six role if they need to. I know that, you know, Brent Offman, he can play some right wing as well, but he's a left winger by trade, so it just is nice to see the Rangers uh, address this area of need. And I know there's a whole different debate that can be had, you know, just draft the best player available or draft for your, uh, the position of need that you have. I think again, when things are, when the scales are tipped this much in one direction, that being the Rangers depth at left wing versus their complete lack of depth at right wing. I think you got to react to that. And I like the fact that the Rangers, uh, went ahead and took a right winger here. Uh, I've been watching, you know, some of pros highlight videos. And, uh, as I have said many, many times on this podcast, I am not a professional scout or anything like that. You know, I tend to defer to the people, once again, that do that for a living and for the most part, really, really know what they're talking about. But you don't have to be a scout to appreciate uh, some of the things that, you know, show up on his highlight reels and some of the things that uh, he seems capable of doing. One of the first things that stands out to me, just some incredible passes. You know, I was watching some highlight reels. Again, just anything, any goal that he had a hand in, whether he scored it or had the assist, uh, just an amazing pass. He had somebody all over him in his own zone basically from inside his own blue line all the way to the other blue line, sprung his teammate into the zone on a rush. His teammate ended up scoring. Uh, Pro's puck handling is outstanding. Uh, there were a couple where you know, he goes in one-on-one -on -one against a defenseman, and the defenseman has good positioning and seems to have things under control, and he'll just make a couple of moves, fake the guy out of skates, go right around him, and uh, score in some instances as well. And then you've got some goals, and I think this goes back to the hockey IQ thing that we were talking about. Again, there are people that believe he has the highest hockey IQ of any player in this draft. There's a few where he kind of just gets lost in the defense and just kind of finds a soft spot and basically just waits for the puck to come to him and, uh, you know, scores. And it's not cherry picking. This is like, like just very cerebral stuff. He just has a knack to find these little patches of open ice here and there. And I realize again, he'll face more resistance, the higher levels that he goes up, you know, every level that he goes up, he'll face more resistance, but he does have a knack for just kind of finding uh, that right place and the right time kind of a thing. And uh, again, on these highlight videos, he was able to take advantage of those such situations. Uh, watching him get drafted by the Rangers was pretty cool as well. He did an interview uh, with some of the Ranger reporters, and I'm, I'm sure just some general NHL media members were there as well. But, you know, they asked him all the basic questions, and you know, he called himself uh, competitive and creative. That's how, uh, when he was asked to describe himself, that's what he went with. Uh, he thinks he's a playmaker, really enjoys setting up his teammates for some goals, and uh Something else, and we will talk about this in greater detail later in today's episode, but he said in a perfect scenario, uh, he would be in college, he would be with the Rangers in two years. Uh, he's got college hockey coming up, and he did mention that uh, he would love to win a national championship there at BC. Um, but yeah, he got drafted, and it sounds like, uh, you know, in his, in his perfect situation, his uh, dream scenario, whatever you want to call it, uh, he'll be with the Rangers in two years. As far as uh, weaknesses, and strengths are concerned. There weren't really a ton of glaring weaknesses. I mean, one of them is kind of obvious, and that's uh, the fact that he does have a little bit of a lack of size. You know, there's certainly bigger and probably stronger players than him available in this draft. But be that as it may, I mean, this guy was too talented, I think, to fall all the way to number 23. The Rangers, you know, we always want them to get bigger and tougher and more physical, and that's all well and good. But when somebody this talented falls right into your lap, I think you owe it to yourself to pounce, especially when he plays the position uh, at which you are the most thin. But again, Perot, uh, 5'11", 165 pounds. As far as the height, I mean, that's not like short, but by hockey, NHL hockey player standards, that is a little bit on the short side. And, you know, there's not really a whole lot you can do there. But as far as like the weight, you know, obviously he's 18 years old. He's still filling out. I'm sure he's going to add some muscle during his time at BC. And uh, hopefully, you know, that isn't too much to his detriment. Uh, as far as other weaknesses, speed and skating, and um, you just hope that by the time that Perot's ready to go and 
He's ready to join the Rangers. If the Rangers uh, have some good coaches, some guys can coach him up a little bit. Uh, maybe he can work with a skating coach, whatever it might be. Uh, but that was mentioned as, you know, not that it's like he's a terrible skater or he's falling all over himself out there. It was just one of those things that doesn't really stand out in a positive way. And again, this is just what I'm gathering from what I've read uh, from all the different scouts. Um, defense, you know, it, there were some scouting reports that said there's times where he's the last guy back uh, on the back check. Um, that's something that I'm not too worried about. I mean, he's 18 years old. You can always coach somebody up in that area. And, you know, hopefully that eventually does happen. Uh, as far as strengths, and there's a lot of them, uh, we've been talking about this one on and off the entire episode. Uh, high hockey IQ, very high hockey IQ, very good decision maker. He is a pass first kind of guy, but he's got a good shot. And he's very good, apparently, with his shot selection. He doesn't force shots when they're not there. Or, you know, low danger scoring opportunities, as Steve Valaket would, would call it. But uh, when he gets the opportunity, he won't hesitate to shoot, even though he is typically a pass first player. Uh, great vision, very skilled puck handler. That was one thing for me that when I was watching his highlight reels, that really pretty much just jumped off the screen for me. Very, very good puck handler. Uh, sees the ice exceptionally well. A uh, threat on the power play. Uh, very disciplined player as well. Does not take a lot of penalties. I believe in that video game-like season that I talked about a second ago. I, I believe that was uh, the league that this stat was referring to. He only had 12 penalty minutes the entire season. So um, a disciplined player, despite his youth as well, and a very creative player as well. Uh, we're going to keep everything rolling in just a second here. I want to go ahead, talk about uh, you know what kind of a role he might play with the Rangers, when we might want to expect him to debut, and I'm also going to put the onus on the Rangers to help him along a little bit because, as we know, uh, it's been mixed results as far as the Rangers being able to develop uh, some of their homegrown players. So we're going to talk about all that good stuff and uh, some other stuff as well, and we will do that in just a second. All right, let's go ahead and keep everything rolling here. Continue to point the spotlight at Gabe Pro Once again, the number 23 selection in this year's draft by the New York Rangers. As far as when he's going to debut, I mean, we kind of covered this a little bit, but I think it's one of those things where you're just going to have to be patient with this one. Again, he is about to start his college career at Boston College. And for Perot himself, he said probably two years. You know, that's his dream scenario kind of thing. Uh, one thing that might accelerate his NHL debut, and again, it's not going to happen this upcoming season. I, I don't think it would happen the season after that. But one thing that could kind of push this along a little bit is something else that we talked about earlier in today's episode. And that's the fact that once again, the Rangers are thin at right wing. Now, of course, by the time that Perot plays a season at Boston college, plays two seasons there, maybe three seasons there, maybe that dynamic with the Rangers has changed a little bit. Maybe they have a right winger that they really trust. I uh, mean, Brandon Othman is lighting it up in the NHL and he's doing most of his damage from the right wing. You never know how this stuff can shake out. Uh, but as things stand right now, again, the Rangers are very thin there. And so, Again, as far as, you know, right wingers with upside right now, you're basically looking at Capo Caco. And so if there's a situation where two years from now or three years from now, whatever it might be, where the Rangers are still kind of thin at right wing, it's still kind of the weakness of the team, then they might kind of push him along a little bit and be like, okay, you know, this kid is, is lit it up everywhere he's been. I mean, I don't know for sure that that's what's going to happen, but in my hypothetical here, that is what happens. Um, but maybe he lights up BC. He leaves there. He gets some time in the AHL. He lights up the AHL as well. I mean, at a certain point, if you're still thin at right wing, okay, we need help here. That's the guy we drafted in the first round. He's killing it everywhere he plays. Let's get him up on this roster, and uh, let, let's give him a chance. And uh, that that is something that could happen. Um, but, of course, you know, the, the Rangers' lack of depth at right wing, that's not going to, like, single-handedly propel him to the NHL. He's going to have to obviously put in the work and, uh, you know, make things happen on his own. Um, but, you know, again, the, the Rangers not having – a lot of right wingers does does not hurt his cause either as far as maybe him being on the fast track to getting to the NHL. But that leads me into something else that I want to talk about. And that is that the Rangers really have to help this kid as much as they can. And I, I know I just mentioned the possibility that he could be on the fast track. They can't rush him along. If he's somebody that could benefit from some more development. And I've said something similar about Brian Othman. I know a lot of Ranger fans are really hyped, really excited about Othman right now. And I am too, believe me. I can't wait to see this kid and see what he can do on the New York Rangers. But I, I would like the Rangers to maybe err on the side of caution. Let him start this upcoming season in the AHL with the Wolfpack. Let him dominate another league. Let him feel really good about himself. And, you know, Othman himself would know at that point, okay, I'm one step away and I'm killing it in the AHL. I'm ready to go in the NHL. There won't be any doubt for Brian Othman once he gets called up that he's ready to do this thing. And um, yeah, just let him continue to sort of climb the ladder. And it's the same thing with Perot. I mean, you have to use your best judgment, um, but don't rush him into a situation. Don't 
overplay your hand. Don't play him in the NHL, you know, before he's really ready to go. But uh, with the Rangers, they've obviously had some issues developing forwards. And I think specifically wingers uh, for quite some time, really. Um, four wingers taken in the top 10 by the Rangers in recent history. You've got Kako, Lafreniere, uh, Leas Anderson, and Vitaly Kravtsov. And at this point, I think it's pretty fair to say that Anderson and Kravtsov both were, both are complete and utter busts. And I'm not even like 100% sure that either one of them is ever going to play in the NHL again. Kravtsov has already gone back to the KHL, signed a two-year contract there. Leas Anderson only played one game uh, with the Kings this past season. So, I mean, how many more chances does he have? Now, the one thing, they are still relatively young. Anderson is still just 24. Kravtsov is still just 25. So they could get another crack at it. But would it shock me if neither one of them made it back to the NHL? No, I mean, I don't think it would at all. Um, and then with Lafreniere and Kako, obviously the book's still out on them. They've gotten better. They've improved every season that goes by. But I think most of us as Ranger fans were hoping and expecting and at times maybe even demanding for these guys to be farther along uh, than they currently are. And this is starting to fall on the Rangers development system and their inability to get the most out of exciting or presumably exciting young forwards that they draft very high overall. Um, you know, they're going to get another crack at it this year with Brennan Offman, whenever he gets his chance with the Rangers, uh, Will Cooley played a couple games last year. Can they bring him along? He was a high draft pick as well. Um, and now you can add Perot to the mix as well. The Rangers, they have to, if they're going to be an elite team in this league, a team that is truly going to compete for the Stanley Cup championship, they got to get the most out of their young players, namely Lafreniere and Kako. Uh, but whenever it's Perot's time to shine, whenever he's ready to make his NHL debut, uh, they have to do everything they can to help him along because you know, sooner or later, you, you know, you have all these forwards and none of them are living up to the hype. And in the case of guys like Anderson and Krasov, and Grant, those two had some attitude issues and that didn't help anyone at all either. That certainly didn't help themselves. But it still goes to the idea that the Rangers just are not able to develop their forwards as well as you would like. And that's not to say they've never developed anybody. Uh, Philip Heal had a little bit of a breakout season this past year. Uh, and if you want to go way back, obviously, you know, Chris Kreider, you know, years and years ago, first round pick, and uh, it's had a really nice career for himself. And they seem to be a lot better do the Rangers at developing defensemen than forwards. Uh, you know, Fox and Lindgren, I realized they weren't drafted by the Rangers, but they made their NHL debut with the Rangers. Uh, Keandre Miller, Braden Schneider, these guys have all, uh, you know, logged some, some big time games in the NHL and are solid players at the very least. And in Adam Fox's case, just a phenomenal player. But it all goes back to, again, the, the Rangers have to do everything possible to help pro along have the pulse of this player, understand, you know, where he is in his development, where his mindset is, stay in constant contact with him, uh, do whatever you got to do to put this kid in a position to succeed, uh, especially whenever it is time for him to make uh, his New York Ranger debut. And I feel like uh, to kind of close out today's episode, I'll leave you guys with a couple of scouting reports. You guys have heard me talk about him long enough. Let's turn to the pros here, the people that, you know, really watch him closely and Really watch, you know, all the members of this draft class closely. And again, these guys are not perfect. They get things wrong, just like you or me get things wrong about hockey or anything else. But uh, they are very, very good at what they do. So we'll start with uh, Elite Prospects here. This is from their 2023 NHL Draft Guide. Pro is a deceptive, adaptable, pacey playmaker who always makes the right choice with the puck. He can sequence plays, put pucks into space, and problem solve against numbers with relative ease. And then this one comes to us from Claire McManus from Smart Scouting, a great playmaker who possesses strong vision. Pro is a real threat on the ice as he has good speed and the ability to be a heaven presence on the forecheck. I think that's supposed to say heavy presence. It says heaven presence on the forecheck. He is a very intelligent player and brings a creative style of play when he is on the ice in small ice or plays along the wall. Pro tends to make smart decisions with the puck on his stick, as well as his body. And I figure I'll read one more here from, uh, let's go with this one from uh, Dauber Prospects. Evan Pace from Dauber Prospects. Pro completes the trio of Boston College commits on the top line at the NTDP, who have cracked our top 32. Heading into the year, Perot was seen more as a playmaker down the road, but he has quickly shown that he is also a talented finisher. His ability to score, distribute, and play a more complete game has allowed him to jump a couple of spots in our midseason rankings. Perot's a forward that every team needs 
with his ability to impact each play, playing alongside Smith, a gifted playmaker, and Leonard, a pure scorer. He's sort of been the glue guy tying their line together. His upside is solid, his talent has shown, and he's worthy of consideration in the mid-first round. And as we now know, he uh, made it past the mid-first round. I mean, I, I guess 23, mid to late first round, call it whatever you want to call it. But again, the, the point stands that he fell quite a bit farther uh, than the Rangers thought that he would. Pretty much, I think anybody thought that he would. And uh, obviously, the Rangers were ready to uh, to pick their guy once he fell, like I said, all the way to number 23. Uh, to wrap up today's episode, one other thing that I want to mention as far as the draft is concerned, you know, we did our locked on NHL mock draft with all of us, you know, locked on hosts. Basically, I mean, just what it sounds like, right? We all make a mock selection for the first round of the NHL draft, just one after the next. That was a lot of fun to be part of that pro- project. Um, at number 23, I chose Daniil Boot. Uh, again, I, I really liked his combination of size and skill. The general consensus was uh, that Boot would probably be there at number 23 in the real draft, but he was not there at number 23 in the actual real draft. Uh, he actually got taken all the way up at number 12 by the Arizona Coyotes, and, and Boot was one of those guys that, like I said, he was very polarizing. Nobody really seemed to know uh, when he was going to be drafted, when he should be drafted, and of course, uh, the Arizona Coyotes rolled the dice, once again, picking uh, number 12 overall uh, in the draft. But... I think it worked out okay for the Rangers because, like I said, I didn't think Gabe Pro was going to be there, and I don't think too many other people did either. Uh, but that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you would like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. And one more thing. The Derek Stepan stories. If you can remember who you were, who you were with, how you reacted, and everything that went down when Derek Stepan scored in Game Seven uh, against the Washington Capitals, all the way back in 2015, we're gonna read your guys' stories uh, on a future episode of Locked On New York Rangers. Once all the dust settles on the draft and free agency and all that good stuff, we'll eventually work our way there. But it works out well that way. That way, you guys have a little bit of time to uh, send in your stories and. I very much look forward to uh, to reading your stories and recording that episode. But yes, that will do it for today. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.